After the rousing success of my last video on Japanese arcades, I knew I absolutely had to make a follow-up for the fans. So what arcade game am I talking about in this second episode of the unnamed arcade game series? What is the best rhythm game you've never played? In front of just about every single Japanese game center, there exists a machine so wonderfully addicting, so much fun, it only exists in 22 locations in America. Legend has it that the machine was outlawed under the Raw Thrills Act of 2001, and these 22 locations stand in defiance to America's arcade oppression and ticket machine terror. But that's just a rumor. Of course, I'm talking about the Taiko no Tatsujin series of arcade games a rhythm game based on the Japanese taiko. The taiko, essentially a large drum, is a Japanese traditional instrument. Defined by their distinctive don and ka, they are the not-so-subtle inspiration behind this series of arcade games. In an ironic twist, this episode was filmed in the land of the free and the home of the brave, America. As someone who has never really been good at rhythm games, taiko included, why has this game managed to capture my attention and love while no others have? Well, the selection of anime and game songs might help, but it just has to be the gameplay. Uh, great graphics, uh, great gameplay. The gameplay in Taiko is so simple even I can understand it. Notes come from the right to the left, and a small red means you hit the center of the drum. A blue means the edges, red being a don and blue being a ka. When they're larger, you can use both drumsticks at the same time. There is a couple of other things too, like drum solos and things that take a certain number of hits to break, but most of the time you're going to be tapping the drum to the rhythm. One of the biggest draws of the game for me is playing with another person. As fun as solo gameplay is, when you're with another person, that's when the real game begins. After all, every game is more fun with friends. As inherently fun as playing the drum with your bros is, there's a variety of modes from co-op to verses that makes it an absolute blast. There's quite a few songs present that contain notes that differ for each player, making these songs a fun, cooperative experience, where two players work together to complete a song. There's a couple of different difficulty settings to choose as well. Since I'm shit at the game, I tend to just stay on normal. Difficulty depends on the song alongside the selected level. So, one song on hard can be a breeze, but another a real challenge. Some songs are inherently more challenging than others, is what I'm trying to say. There is even a secret difficulty for the absolute madmans out there. So this game really caters to every single type of person. As someone who's never really been big on rhythm games or very good at them, Taiko really scratches a fun and casual itch that no rhythm game or arcade game has been able to scratch before. As fun as the arcade games are, there also exists a small number of games on consoles. Only two have been localized, the Wii and Switch version. The Switch is an excellent version to sort of get into the series. It has a variety of different playstyles, mini games, and a good selection of modern songs that make for some fun gameplay. But this version has the most evil control scheme known to man. A control scheme so absolutely dastardly that entire articles and YouTube tutorials exist just to explain it. This piece of shit is so absurdly unwieldy that countless people, myself included, have been infuriated by its pure evil. The motion controls on the Switch do not work, plain and simple. Do yourself a favor and go to the nearest round one, or whatever arcade near you has it, and play it in real life. Except for the Grapevine location in Texas, that machine from hell barely works more than the Switch motion controls. As you play Taiko no Tatsujin in the arcade, you'll gradually unlock more ways to customize your character. That is, if you're keeping track with a handy game card such as this Bandai Namco Pass. But you'll just have to take my word for it, because the US arcades are cucked with older machines that don't have this. You can unlock character customization stuff from just playing a specific song or doing more tasks. A small amount of this transfers over to the Nintendo Switch version of the game, where you can unlock different characters with different abilities, but they're largely different systems. If you have a pass, you can also keep track of how well you do on different songs and more. There's a wide variety of music present to cater to just about everybody's interests here. From popular J-pop tunes, anime openings and endings, 
video game music, and more. Some of my favorites are the Toho music, anime openings, and video game tunes. If you look hard, you can find some songs that are a real treat, such as Pokemon game music medleys and such. On top of that good stuff, there's also a bunch of crap probably nobody plays. Classical stuff like Mozart and these Namco originals, for example. Who the hell wants to play... When you can play... Joking aside, these songs generally have a good amount of challenge for those who are better than me. If you ever find yourself in a game center with your bros, give Taiko no Tatsujin a shot. Even better if you've had a beer or two. It's an excellent game for rhythm game newbies like me, and it's got a pretty good selection of different songs to play. Just be warned, you'll never be as good as the 8-year-old Japanese kids who just absolutely style on people. Just give up.